Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, actually, I have gone through the whole draft, and uh, I was uh, in the preparation of uh, for some comments that to be sent to CA. Okay. Um, then about uh, I have concern about some points. Of, uh, I thought to discuss in uh, due course uh, about this one. Uh, uh, see about uh, uh, regulation 37. It actually it is totally changed now. Uh, but uh, it, uh, I understand it. It was it is a consolidation of the whole things in the old uh, exist or uh, existing uh, regulation. But still, confusions are there regarding. Uh, I have concern about the secondary protection of transformer. Even a fuse is suggested there, uh, but I think uh, uh, some modification is occurred there. Uh, and another thing uh, uh, regarding this uh, earthing, earth conductor by the licensee. Uh, actually, in India, I understand that it is not uh, not anywhere implemented. Then uh, why uh, we can't uh, modify the uh, wordings, uh, adding uh, adding this uh, TN, TNC, uh, TNCS uh, and it, uh, such a type of systems? Uh, I suggest to incorporate that one also. Then about uh, the switches in the consumer premises by the supplier, there are also some conditions are there. Anyway, uh, uh, I suggested to uh, join the discussion uh, during the meeting only. I'm going to do now. Thank you. I, I shall add more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your opinion, sir. I think uh, in the registration, uh, we have put uh, a questionnaire. And a lot of questions came during uh, the registration, and a lot of questions regarding uh, earthing as uh, usual. Um, so, Apausar, uh, about uh, your opinion, we are waiting to listen to you about your opinion on yes, the yes, regulation, yeah. sir. Yeah, I could, sorry, I couldn't. Uh, good morning, everybody. First of all, I couldn't unmute. Uh, now only I could uh, be able to unmute. Okay. Uh, it's a very good effort. Uh, I first, sincerely thank you. I uh, appreciate Mr. Uh, Gopa Kumar for his untiring efforts. Okay, I'm straight away coming into the uh, uh, subject. Uh, the thing is, there are uh, there is a very good approach for CEA. Uh, they have taken into cognizance of all the uh, uh, trends and facts and the difficulties. But we have to fine tune it uh, so that uh, everybody cannot be, may not be themselves confused. So for which I am evolving some uh, amendment, and it will be a lengthy one. I will uh, send it by mail and post it to Mr. Gopa also. But anyhow, I will touch upon very few points. Uh, first thing, uh, actually regulation 226 I want to touch upon. Uh, that is the definition. Uh, in the definition, uh, there is some uh, uh, in 226, it should be modified because earthing means connection of exposed conductive or external conductive parts of insulation to the earth terminal provided by the supplier as per regulation. We can insert it because uh, so many uh, minute details of explaining earth uh, bonded bar. You have become mute. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you. Great. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Agenda. Uh, I think <coughs> he has uh, lost the connection. Uh, okay. He is no more in the uh, connection. I think some internet. So, Haman uh, Saliji, uh, first we are starting with a small opinion about uh, your opinion about the new draft regulation. Uh, to make a, you know to set a base for the discussion please yeah uh, i must appreciate ca has taken a lot of efforts 
to uh, make an amendments in the existing regulations. Uh, I also had sent some comments on the draft of 2021, and uh, I can see this uh, many of them have been adopted in this uh, 22 draft also. But still, I feel there are few more remaining which needs to be taken care of. It's from the point of view of actually what we are trying to do is we are going to uh, refining everything every time. So this is the good time for us to again rethink whatever is remaining. We should consider that and go with that. <clears throat> See, in these regulations, uh, 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 I have been thinking that some part related to design shall be included in the wording of regulations because what is happening at present the consultants are preparing design which do, we do not have any accreditation at all anywhere. And based on this design, the contractors are making the uh, installations. So this is the wrong thing. Actually, when the contractors carry out the installations, they say they have to work as per the design given by the consultant. And these consultants do not have any accreditation. So I feel that there should be some uh, procedure to uh, give the accreditation to these consultants so that we can make them responsible whatever, whatever design they prepare. <clears throat> so this is a very important point which I think we should include in our uh, regulations. And so many new things have come. I think new additions have been done. Those are welcome. <clears throat> so there are some changes needed in the uh, 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 form 1, 2, 3 also, I think those should be aligned with the I-732 um, recommendations that I think also can be done. One more thing I can suggest is that we need to prepare some different for uh, in, uh, verification forms as per the type of installation. For residential, it should be a separate form. For high-rise building, it should have some additional things in that. For uh, where the public places are there, there should be some different type of forms. So if it is possible, it will be better to streamline the actually the needs of that uh, particular place. I sincerely appreciate CS efforts and would like to contribute further also. One more another thing I would like to suggest is that like uh, we do in um, uh, BIS meetings, uh, BIC teams, uh, see, we appoint some uh, external uh, experts to consider our suggestions. But uh, in this regard, I think CA, whether it considers or not, I don't know. But I would suggest the CA should also consider appointing some external experts while formulating the regulations. That's all I want to say. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, over to you, Mr. Mukul for your comments and the answers. Uh, Namaskar, Aparao sir, Kutti sir, Heman Sali sir, uh, Gopa sir, and all the participants uh, who is there in this uh, discussion. Just uh, Heman Sali sir, the sir has mentioned that uh, we need to rope in uh, some experts while uh, formulating the draft. Sir, actually in this process, the experts are generally called and uh, we take their suggestions and their inputs and accordingly we discuss and we keep in the final draft. And also sir, regarding uh, the thing which you were mentioning that uh, separate forms for residential building and other type of establishments or, or public places. So for that, uh, your suggestion is welcome and uh, we will look forward uh, into it and uh, whatever the suitable thing will come because what happens now uh, if we are going uh, into more specific things what happens the regulation becomes more voluminous and more kind uh, like of a standards bi standards so we want that we should provide some sort of uh, kind of uh, you can say uh, legal guidelines so that more things can be framed upon it so but as you suggested we will look into it and kindly i will request to uh, send your comments suggestions inputs regarding it yes sir thank you, uh, thank you. and uh, about upper house sir he mentioned uh, about the definition part in the definition part uh, actually most of the things are taken from uh, the, the bis itself and uh, if there are any suggestion for its improvement, we definitely welcome it. 
it's the window which is open till 28 july and we are looking forward for inputs from all over india so that this time our regulation can be more comprehensive more you can say have its uh, greater applicability in terms of uh, this electrical safety and it should be a uh, kind of uh, more uh, uh, like uh, e- more uh, easy to understand so we are focusing on that so for that i would request all the participants who are listening to me to send their comments have the neutral opinion about any regulation whatever you feel please write to us the window is open till 28 july see the comprehensive review review started in the year 2015 after that two times the draft was put in the public domain due to corona and other reasons it got delayed but what is happening actually each time we are taking inputs we are refining the draft and we are bringing it to the public domain for further comments so what we are doing we are actually making it more more i can say a good package for the public and also the personnel who are basically operating in the utilities so that it can be related to them and it can ensure electrical safety here in the india itself uh now what about the james putty sir has mentioned about that uh, this uh, tc uh, this uh, uh, configuration of uh, this uh, arching Uh, about that tncs and all those things see sir actually we have taken or we have sent that uh, draft to bis and uh, the comments came from uh, the apex level and uh, i think goppa sir might be aware about that so they have given that inputs on that uh, basically earthing configurations and we have taken as it is so if anything coming from bis or any other similar agencies then uh, we are definitely going to uh, look into it and if it is suitable then we will incorporate it so uh, okay. that was from my side and uh, i will definitely say that uh, we are looking forward for the comments and the comments are pouring in and we are thankful uh, to those uh, all our uh, residents of uh, india that those who are sending us comment and we will request everyone to send the comments so that we can make a very you uh, know fruitful thing out of our efforts and also if anyone if anyone who is listening to me wants to discuss in person about the available regulation which is on the website or in the uh, or was on the leading newspaper can come to our office and can discuss and give give their comments in writing so that's all so over to you gopal thank you thank you thank you very much uh, mr mugul kumar thank you very much so i start uh, a question from uh, an engineer who is work who has worked with uh, uh, madhya pradesh in the state distribution company uh, the energy supply company uh, the question is uh, the regulation 16 switch gear on consumer premise actually it's a question regarding uh, regulation 16 17 and 18 uh, which is basically the old 14 15 and 16 uh earth the neutral earth the conductor and uh, the earth the terminal and all uh, so the question is after the introduction of rpd uh, rapdrp scheme to reduce uh, in uh, uh, the transmission losses uh, distribution companies licensee started putting aerial bunched cables and electronic energy meters outside the consumer premise in a sealed polycarbonate uh, enclosure uh from the box uh, it is the, uh, the connection is provided to the consumer premise but there is no switch gear there is no switch gear in the box the cable which is coming from the distribution company it is getting directly terminated to the meter and from the meter it is simply uh, provided to the consumer premise uh, so this is the issue which they are facing uh, that means the distribution company is not following the regulation properly the question is uh, how to handle this how to stop this or how to improve this any answer uh, uh, shri mukul kumar so what uh, uh, what what was the uh, what is the name of the gentleman who asked this question uh, this is by mr himanshu mr himanshu so i would uh, request mr himanshu that uh, basically if the if in his point of view that comms are not following uh, the regulations 
so he should actually first uh, go to the grievances cell of that particular discom and he should mention that uh, as per this regulation uh, it is found that uh, in that particular electrical installation or whatever the this uh, meter is, they have installed it's not up to the mark and it's a kind of a violation of regulation and they should he's actually uh, mr himanshu should seek response from that particular grievance cell of that discom and if they are not responding then they can contact to the state electrical inspectorate office even after that they are not contacted they can contact to us we could not allow the violation of regulation because this is there for the electrical safety uh, of the personal operating or any general public so uh, we should not tolerate this and we should report to it and accordingly we should seek the remedial measures yes thank you thank you very much uh, mr mukul uh, Uh, the same uh, gentleman has asked the, the question world over uh, nowadays for earthing instead of making this uh, earth neutral and uh, you know this complicated words uh, the simplified names are given such as tnc tns tnc stt or whatever why don't the regulation follow that kind of uh, simplified nomenclature as per probably is uh, 3043 or uh, 732 rather than writing this uh, little bit uh, legal uh, forms of the and uh, names any uh, answer on that yes sir actually it is a kind of a regulatory framework so legal aspects little bit of legal aspects are there itself uh, in any of the clause if you read in the regulations but as you have mentioned uh, that uh, we should have some simple nomenclature there for the earthing system we actually uh, the most part of the this uh, earthing uh, basically portion of the regulation uh were actually seen by bis and the inputs which were given by them were incorporated and uh, the inputs did not include any of this nomenclature if we will get from bis or any other good agency then definitely will incorporate there is no issue with that and i would request that uh, the the gentleman who is asking this question should give it as a suggestion or input for our draft regulation yes i think uh, that's a uh, good opinion i think they are also listening to the program so definitely they will write to you uh, so right. sali ji any comments yeah, on yeah, yeah, uh, comments yeah, see, from your side regarding yeah, this yes, yes. see actually the what the what has been suggested in regulations that correlates with the tnc uh, or tncs system only but again there is one another clause the consumer may have his own earth, earth electrode and that should be now it has been provision has been made that it should be connected to the earth terminal provided by the supplier so somehow it is a mixing of tt and uh, tnc or tncs connection so there has to be some clarity suppose in case if a consumer prepares his own earth electrode in like tt system and if he connects it to the earth terminal given by the supplier will there be any chance of inrush of fault current into the consumer's premises from any other source that also we should think about so i think there has to be some clarity and again one more thing which i have seen here is that the there is option is given with the state governments whether to apply tt system or not again here i think there should be is clarity so that uh, after i mean notification of these regulations there should be certain fixed uh, uh, terminology in respect of tncs its tncs is not for uh, tncs can be used here but tt and tncs there has to be some clarity in between these two again again i will uh, one more thing i can tell you it is very difficult to rely on the earth terminal given provided by the supplier because floating of neutral are quite common things and that's why the consumers are making his uh, own uh, electric in tt systems also so i think uh, ca has a very uh, i think uh, important things to give some strict guidelines in respect of this sir thank you uh, sir uh, another question to sri james kutty Uh, Sri James Kutty, sir, you have worked as uh, you know several decades in the electrical inspectorate, and uh, most of the questions, if we look at, uh, are related to the violation of uh, the regulation. Uh, let us say, for example, uh, if you find a violation, like uh, guarding is missing, uh, the earthed terminal is not there, earthed contractor is not there, as an inspector. uh you know that uh, for example in case if you know that the electrical supply company is violating the regulation 
what uh, actions are possible and uh, how the public uh, should uh, uh, handle it. Over to you, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. Find the violation from the electricity supply company because, uh, as you know, last week when we discussed about 45 percentage of the accidents are happening in the distribution, and mostly it is because of the violation of uh, the regulations by the utility, uh, the energy supply company. How uh, the inspectorate take up uh, take it further with the uh, uh, with the supply company? Okay, actually, uh, electrical supplies or the licensee are, are actually the major uh, stakeholder of handling electricity. So, in, in many situations, uh, the authorities like electrical inspectors are not uh, uh, that stringent in applying regulation clauses. As we discussed, uh, there are penalties insisted as per regulation, uh, as per Electricity Act 164. But uh, how many are implementing this strictly? This is very difficult. Actually. Another point uh, I find uh, the difficulty in the implementation of the technical legal way of the regulation clauses. So many of the technical persons responsible to implement the clauses find uh, their own way of interpretation. There are many such practical difficulties actually. Of course, of course, uh, the distribution boards are open and accessible to human. Clearances are not uh, properly followed. Guarding is missing. The earth conductor by the licensee is missing. I think uh, nowhere in India such an earthing conductor is given by the licensees. As we discussed just now, it is. Sir, I think, uh, sir, your uh, your voice is. Your voice is a little bit lagging. Your voice is a little bit lagging. If you can switch off the camera, voice will be better. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Is it clear now? Yeah, better. Okay, okay, okay. okay I don't know from uh, uh, which point uh, you heard it clearly. Anyway, uh, the distribution boards uh, boards are open uh, and accessible to human. Uh, clearances are actually not followed properly. Uh, then uh, guarding is missing. Then about the earth conductor by the licensee, actually it is not uh, implemented anywhere in India. So better, as we discussed just now, better uh, to clarify the related regulation with the uh, type of system, TNC, TNS, uh, TNCS, etc. Then uh, we should insist uh, to have at least earth fault protection. I mean, uh, uh, if uh, leakage protection is not possible, at least earth fault protection should be provided for the uh, distribution secondary side, distribution transformer secondary side. What about the meter boxes or the switchboard materials? Uh, as per our regulation, uh, fire resistant material must be is enough actually. But uh, majority of the licenses are implementing to have uh, metal boards. Sir. So, uh, and them are earth also. These uh, metal boards are earth also. Then where is the protected device uh, to operate uh, if there is an earth fault? Nowadays, uh, nowadays, guarding is only in birds. Uh, guarding is uh, not properly done. They are close there. And uh, about the guarding, instead of guarding, why can't implement uh, strictly uh, for the voyage lines uh, uh, by uh, replacing with uh, insulating conductors? Uh, that way, some uh, instruction should be there. Uh, that's all for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I think uh, I would like to recall uh, uh, Suomoto case taken by the High Court of uh, Kerala. Uh, two years back uh, regarding an accident happened in the in uh, in one of the city uh, the reply given by the electricity supply company that is the kerala state electricity board they have replied that uh, to make some change in the existing uh, non-confirmed system non-confirmed in the sense that the regulations are not followed 
so if they wanted to change uh, their complete electrical distribution uh, as per the regulation they need a problem Three four thousand crores of rupees, and the company doesn't have money to invest so much. Then finally, it went to a kind of a political situation. So basically, uh, even in a state like Kerala, I think uh, the regulations are not followed properly. So we have uh, Mr. Himanshu. Uh, Mr. Himanshu, you you have experience in working with some of the company uh, distribution company. Mr. Himanshu is the director in Camtak Indian Railway. Mr. Himanshu. Uh, over to you. You can. You have raised your hand. You can ask the question. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, can I? Can Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Sir, actually, this uh, regarding uh, this, sir. Uh, first, I just wanted to tell about uh, myself. I am Manishu Maheshwari. I am Joint Director, Center for Advanced Maintenance Technology, RDSO, Indian Railways. So we have been working on this subject for last one and a half year, and. Uh, we have seen the situation uh, in indian railways and before coming to railways i was working with state city board distribution for 3 years so uh, regarding regulation sir uh, matlab if i say blindly ki they don't they don't know what is regulation actually even uh, matlab 90% of us even not, neither it was taught us in our uh, training time neither it was taught during the progress time because the main motto of distribution company is nowadays revenue sir and it is not because of their fault the ministry itself is working on this revenue part only they are mostly all engineers are mostly focused on revenue parts nobody is looking after this electrical this compliance of the safety and no electrical uh, special officers are been there regarding this earth fall protection sir tncs tt system was i was not aware about since last year um, i was not aware neither it was taught as an is an engineering neither it was any other uh, part of any training sir so Uh, while reading this regulation, sir, uh, this uh, 1617, sir, uh, as sir said, ki Mukul sir said, ki uh, it has to be a little bit uh, with respect to legal language. But my request with the sir is ki sir, act has a legal language, sir. Regulations are for implementation directly at the field level, sir. If it is also has same same confusing language, sir, uh, it will be very difficult to implement because again in this. Uh, complete uh, regulation, we could not find clarity on the type of earthing system used. and that is the primary importance which will ensure the electrical safety in an installation sir because currently the distribution utilities are using uh, tt system and now they are putting uh, this uh, abc cable edel bunch cables in edel bunch cables they are not able to ensure this pme in every fifth pole as per the regulation sir further sir is 732 states different type of systems to be used where sir Like IS seven thirty two says, that TNC TNS system can be used where a transformer is in within the premises, sir. But regulation doesn't say. Neither regulation directs to the IS seven thirty two for implementing of the earthing system. So again, things are not uh, neither linked. It is again creating the same confusion, sir. And uh, which because of this, sir, uh, the electrical safety week uh, it will be very difficult for state electricity utilities to ensure, sir. so clarity on type of implement uh, uh, this sir uh, earthing system to be used by them should be there sir like for example sir japan different countries they have defined their system sir like even sri lanka is using tt system sir matlab it is defined sir japan is using tt system they have defined U us is uh, using tns system they have defined sir uk is using tncs system with pme they have defined we have not clearly defined ki what system why we are using either we should define at a national level ki we should use tncs system or we should define ki state electricity authorities will ensure will give the type of system what they want to use thereby ensuring the electrical safety in the consumer premises so different state electricity authorities can decide at some point it has to be clear sir so that uh, we can ensure electrical safety in future in coming future sir and uh, one more point regarding this sir uh, this switch gear part sir uh, which uh, i was uh, telling this uh, regulation 16 sir um, sir after an introduction of rap drp this all uh, meters were uh, brought outside so that this theft on atnc losses can be reduced so uh, while they were coming out sir this all uh, switch gear parts were not taken care of they were removed and uh, as you said ki the matter has to be taken to the uh, higher ups the same was taken by the some uh, local but the uh, 
utilities have given effort debit that they have to ensure electrical safety and the responsibility of the meter and safety will be there but only effort debit will not ensure safety sir and uh, one more point sir regarding regulation 33 sir which says testing sir now again the very important point is testing of an electrical installation sir in foreign countries sir like in us and all uh, uk uh, once uh, uh, that the installation cannot be charged without testing the same rule is with us same here but what happens the liberty of testing has been given to the supplier to the licensed electrical contractor uh, who can certify the uh, um, the uh, the testing results given by the consumer itself or the cse in the latest regulation now sir we have opened uh, testing part to all three sir the uh, the easiest ways of getting the regulation is by licensed electrical contractor sir they don't have any instrument nothing they will write a matlab uh, this is a ground uh, reality sir we can't write and give but this is the ground reality ki they simply uh, give testing result but neither it is been tested i am and i am mostly talking about the uh household and commercial installations lit, uh, small sir installation not the uh, big industrial installations because we were dealing with the small installation and 90% of the indian installations are uh, commercial and this small home installation only so in in this aspect we should think of something so that clarity on this and uh, safety further can be ensured sir Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Iman Shu. Thank you very much, Mr. Iman Shu. Actually, all of us knows that we are changing. Uh, consumers are changing towards prosumers. So, in future, uh, each uh, party will be generating or producing something and consuming uh, consuming something. So, once when the status change to prosumer, or once when more more and more solar uh, small grid or smaller rooftop installations are connected to the grid, the system is going to be more complicated. In fact. so it is the right time to make uh, a clear uh, 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 you know method of connecting uh, to the suppliers or to the consumers uh, facility thinking about the future requirement as well uh, so i would like to we would like to listen a little bit uh, from um, apau sir on this particular uh, subject sir apau sir any comments on this you are on mute so i think he is not listening uh, hemant sali ji any any comments uh, further on this or how to strengthen this part you have to unmute uh, yes gopal ji uh, what is it hello the the regulation 14 15 16 or the new 16 17 18 the Yeah, earth terminal. See, earth terminal. The company's confusion is already mentioned. The whether it is to be considered TNCS system or it is to be considered as TT system. Either one, we have to choose, and accordingly we should proceed because protection depends on the system also. You know quite well. <laughs> so unless we choose some particular system, we cannot uh, move further. See, TN TNS system is impossible. The distribution company won't afford to run a separate conductor for a thing. So, and in case of TNCS system, as I already mentioned, I, we cannot rely on the supply as neutral because so many accidents are happening because of that only voltage unbalance and all that. If you see that uh, distribution transformers, I think those are in very poor state. Uh, and uh, actually, from the consumer's point of view, he cannot do anything. so he he is left with the only one answer he should go with the tt system so like where in the countries where it has been confirmed that they should do with the particular type of earthing system likewise india also has to take some decision regarding that and regarding the switch gear there has to be two different switch gears one has to be a supplier switch gear near the point of supply i mean the near the meter and one has to be uh, consumer switch gear near the point of supply so both of these switch gears should be there at the point of supply previously it was called a supplier's cutout it uh, it was mentioned that and uh, consumer has to has a switch gear because as per our if you see the point of supply it has been defined that the uh, incoming terminal of the consumer switch gear should be treated as a point of supply so there the responsibility gets divided which part is to be maintained by whom so the 
prior to that point of supply, it is supplier's responsibility to uh, keep his installation in safe condition and maintain it. And after that, it's consumer's responsibility to keep his um, installation in safe condition. So that switch gear has very much importance and it has to be there. And there should be two distinct switch gears because the consumer, uh, even a supplier cannot touch the consumer switch gear and uh, consumer cannot touch the supplier's uh, switch gear. Supply gear is, supplier has to have his switch gear in case he wants to cut off the supply of consumer, he should use his switch gear. So that provision is there and that is very valid and it has to be there continued. Thank you. Thank you, Saliji. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Sanjay Kolatkar, uh, Rice Dis, and uh, Sanjay ji, you can unmute yourself and you can uh, post your question. Mr. Sanjay is a member uh, in the ETD20 committee. Uh, we are, uh, uh, he is very active in the National Electrical Code and so on. Sanjay ji, hope uh, you can hear me. We also have Mr. Rahul Shirke. Mr. Rahul, uh, uh, you can also post your question. You, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question, please. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, uh, my question is as per new draft regulation is that uh, means uh, regulation states about the uh, care to be taken for uh, electrical vehicles, uh, means EV charging stations. But whereas in industry we uh, we are going uh, we are using the forklift which are battery operated and supplied by Linde. So whether all uh, regulations that are applicable for EV are also applic applicable for this battery operated vehicle. This is my first question and second question is uh, the use of flexible cables for portable equipment. So in industry uh, we are having uh, many uh, debates and discussion about these flexible issues. Because uh, in 2016, there were some uh, fatal accidents in our premises. So uh, the all portable equipments which are there are having inbuilt cables along with that uh, portable uh, paint sprayer or any drill machines. So uh, there we are facing issues whether uh, we need to allow them because as per CA guidelines, uh, the, it is uh, as per regulation 23 uh, clause number one, they are saying that flexible cables shall not be used. So how CA team is going to uh, give a resolution on this? Because most of the uh, OEM equipments are coming along with their own cables, which we can't remove from that equipment. Thank you, Mr. Rahul. Uh, you are from which industry, Mr. Rahul? Uh, you uh, can sir, introduce I'm yourself. From, uh, Deepak Fertilizer. We are in uh, chemicals and uh, fertilizer. Okay, oh, that's good. So, uh, Mr. Rahul, uh, shall I ask one small question to you, if you permit me? Uh, yes, you have told that there is an accident uh, in your premise. Uh, 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 have you tested the fault loop impedance uh, of your uh, circuits, uh, the final circuits which is connected to this equipment through flexible cables and ensured that the MCBs are capable of tripping? Uh, MCBs are uh, capable of trippings, but uh, we, we are facing issues. Uh, means uh, some of the uh, contractor portable equipments are more than uh, in between 4 to 5 kilowatts, where leakage currents are uh, more than uh, 30 milliamps because of moisture and all these things, uh, where uh, we always need to have close supervision on that. Correct, but the question which I asked is, uh, have you tested fault loop impedance? Uh, see, if we install an MCB, we can believe that the MCB will trip, but uh, uh, to ensure it is working uh, uh, you know, properly, we need to make a test with a fault loop impedance meter. Sir, have you uh, tested for, this is the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For that, we are having this uh, leakage current RCCB tester. So we are, we are adjusting that leakage current and we, we are testing whether that uh, whether, whether it is tripping uh, plus minus 10% uh, or it is beyond that. If, if it is be, be beyond that, we are uh, replacing that. Okay. So uh, Sir, uh, any panelist would like to answer? Yes, sir. Um, so Mukul Kumar, any answers? Yes, sir. Mukul Kumar, yeah. So uh, just uh, Mr. Rahul quoted that uh, flexible, uh, flexible cables are not allowed for this uh, motor generators as per regulation 23. I think that uh, he should uh, read the regulation uh, 23 part 1 clearly. In it, 
it has been clearly mentioned let me read it flexible cables shall not be used for portable or transportable motors generators transformers rectifiers electric drills electric sprayers welding sets or any other portable or transportable apparatus unless they are insulated for required voltage as per relevant indian standards and adequately protected from mechanical damage where we have like in a blunt way not allowed the flexible cables for any electrical equipment this is really very wrong coating we are removing the major part that we have the exception and the exception holds when we are maintaining the mechanical integrity and electrical integrity see this is the way na this is the way the regulations are taken in a wrong direction and after that those few lines are being made standards and they are quoted in the contracts in the procurement and after all all the blaming goes to ca this is this is very wrong i should say that please read properly if there is any any suggestion any issue any input you want to give for improvement any comment or maybe from those sources who are sending you who are feeding you this half information please tell them to comment if they have any suggestion any beautiful suggestion they have got any valuable input they have got so this is this is see we what we want to do we want to have the development of electrical infrastructure in india along with the electrical safety being in role that's what we want to do and for that we have made the provisions very clear we have not like blunt as clearly banned the use of flexible cables the way it might have been quoted somewhere i think that uh, they have they need some correction and uh, what was the your first doubt uh, mr rahul uh, regarding this uh, electric vehicle charging station yeah Please, the question uh, was uh, the in the industry in the factories uh, the uh, the uh, forklifts are there dc battery operated forklift will they classified uh, as uh, electric vehicle or not electric vehicle charging stations uh, definitely if you go through the definitions uh there it is there in the draft from my point of view it is not but you can go through it if you have any doubt anything any input also for improving that uh, definition you can uh, write to us okay thank you thank you, you much, uh, thank you very much thank you very much mr mukul kumar we have uh, one gentleman raised this mr krish uh, theobold uh, mr krish uh, if you are listening you can unmute yourself and ask the question hi can you hear me yes please Yes, yeah. Before I ask my question, I would like to add. There was a gentleman that asked about that about about uh, mentioned about an accident, and you mentioned about the testing of loop impedance, and then he answered about uh, testing RCDs. Actually, there is a difference between testing RCDs and testing loop impedance. RCDs will have a much higher minimum loop impedance requirement because their sensitivity is much lower. But testing uh, loop impedance for MCBs will have significantly lower. loop impedance requirements so i would advise that the gentleman reconsider that that and test the loop impedance for mcb tripping not rcd tripping okay thanks uh, any questions uh, you have or this is uh, yeah, yeah thank you yes, thank so you my question is that you know there are So as a clear reference to IS seven three two in the uh, Central Electricity Authority. Hello. Please, please. Hello? We can hear you. Yeah, we can There's hear you. Please go ahead. There is a clear reference to IS seven three two in the regulations for high rise buildings, etc. So my question is, does this also apply to the distribution company for the metering equipment? Because there are clear violations in terms of their equipment. with is732 uh, yeah actually is732 is applicable only for the consumer premise uh, inside the premise after the point of commencement of supply i would say uh, it is not uh, up to the point of commencement of supply so i hope uh, that if you look at the, the point uh, of commencement of supply okay Yes. Yeah, I was I, yes. I I I was aware aware of that, but I was wondering if there's any action that could be taken, you know, for clear deficiencies. But okay, fair enough. 
Uh, I have a follow. I have another question though about the electrical vehicle charging equipment. May I go ahead and ask that? Yes, please make it fast. Yeah, sure. So you know there was a lot of discussion also about the earthing systems, etc., and about how unreliable the neutrals are. So it's very often that um, if the neutral is broken, the uh, the metallic part of the of an EV, which is basically connected to your earth terminal, and if it is a TNCS system, that earth terminal can start floating. There is no, and then someone who touches the EV while standing on the ground can get an electrical shock. So there is no provision in the CEA regulations that includes protective measures for this. So you know, I actually written an email to the to the CEA about uh, uh, certain regulations from foreign standards where. The, we used to mitigate this, but I don't actually see it coming in. Do, do, the, does the, do the panelists have any opinions on this? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, um, um, so Krish, I think uh, the best way is to make your comment to the uh, draft regulation so that uh, the team or the CA can very well consider these points uh, while uh, making the corrections. So, pl please uh, do that. So we have uh, Mr. Uh, there is a con question. Uh, just we a would second, like to sir, take just few a, questions. Yes, please. Opa, sir, I just uh, this is Mughal Kumar. I just uh, want to ask Mr. Chris when he has written the letter and to which division he has written that letter or the communication of which um, he has made. I, I wrote it to Mr. LKS Rathor. LKS Rathor, when? Uh, it was uh, in December. Uh, sorry, uh, this was, let's see. Uh, it was six months ago. Six months ago. Okay. So I will look into it. What was your comment? And you can just the way Gopasar has just communicated, you can uh, write in there the comment uh, for this draft regulation. And about your second query regarding that the failure of any earthy system, there is one provision. Right. There is one provision for the earth monitoring system to be included that is in addition to the earthing protection which we give. As usual, we, you were speaking uh, right now. So yeah, there yeah, is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one. There is already one backup protection for the monitoring of earthing system, and also there are some other things also which indirectly will whatever the question was with you know that he will with the personnel or anyone standing beside that uh, electric vehicle being charged, and in the failure of that uh, earthing, he might get shocked. There, are, uh, there are some other provisions also which will which will indirectly will avoid this thing and definitely it will give warning and all those things like that. So you, for more clarity and for more like uh, better input, you can write to us. OK, so that we can understand what exactly your comment is and accordingly we will act upon it. OK, and you can send that copy again to me. OK. Uh, Thank you very much. Sure, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have an interesting question from Mr. Satish Kumar. Uh, just to query from him we are having this uh, the ca regulation as a draft for a long time now uh, will it not be better if we issue the standard progressively as we receive this will enable us to follow the latest standard so what he is saying is probably not uh, you know step by step slowly uh, improve something then the second question is regarding global earthing it is difficult to convince the CEAG inspector as well as our engineers and we are ending up providing hundreds of earth pit instead of less than 10 in case of global earthing. In fact, uh, when I mentioned this, everybody looks crazy at me. Is there any plan to educate the local engineers and inspector about uh, global earthing? So Mr. Satish Kumar has put some question regarding uh, earthing. Uh, so what he says is, uh, uh, if I if if he tells his uh, colleagues that uh, so many earth pits are not required, then people look at him uh, crazy. So uh, uh, any any comments? Uh, anybody uh, any comments on this? Uh, James Kuti sir, any comments from your side uh, regarding uh, this uh, thing? Suppose in in Kerala we are following uh, the fault level calculation. And suppose we are uh, reaching about uh, 20 or 30 uh, number of earth electrodes. That's a method of uh, implementation of the earth here. Actually, uh, even uh, I moved to 3043, I'm not getting a clear idea regarding how to 
uh, implement uh, everything properly. Uh, I suggest you to have a uh, proper clarification through regulation or uh, uh, adequate training should be given to this uh, electrical inspectors dep uh, department. Uh, then only such conditions can be avoided because electrical inspectorate is the uh, authority to implement uh, the method of earthing. So first uh, they must be trained properly. Uh, another, uh, this duplicate earthing and uh, global earthing and uh, and many conditions are there. That should be clearly, uh, I am not able to explain the clear method. That's a problem. Recently I got a query that they are getting 54 plate earth electrodes. How to proceed? There lies the points. Okay, that's it. That's okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you uh, very much. Actually, so, this the one of the a good idea would be to make a guide with pictures how to make these uh, clauses applicable with uh, uh, some photographs. Probably we will try to make uh, uh, a kind of a guide. Uh, incorporating different clauses from the regulation and from the uh, IS standards so that it will be like a guide uh, anybody can refer. Uh, I, I request the support of all the panelists to make this kind of a book uh, happen so that uh, we can make use of it and everybody can refer to that. We have uh, Mr. Shivakumar has raised his hand. Mr. Shivakumar, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question or if yeah. you can participate, please. Yeah, good afternoon. See, many, especially I have been in this field for about 38 years now, uh, EPC and manufacturing. Many times I come across specifications which insist on uh, following state CAG regulations. Tamil Nadu, you, the, the manufacturer or the customer should follow state CAG regulation, like Tamil Nadu CAG regulation, Kerala CAG regulation, Karnataka CAG regulation. I don't <coughs> think any, any state electrical inspector can for simula uh, stipulate is their own regulation as long as the installation is following CEA regulation that should be given certificate. In, uh, I want to know whether any individual state is empowered to make their own electricity regulations apart from CEA regulations. Uh, Mr. Gopaji, thank you. I... Thanks for the question. Uh, oh, uh, to you, Mr. Apau, sir, please. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gopaji. It's a very good question. Sorry to say that. Uh, uh, my mic was muted and couldn't uh, continue my discussion. Thanks for the unmuting from the analyst. First of all, uh, I wanted to answer two or three questions. For this first question from Mr. Srivatakumar, I will answer that there is no regulation framed by the Tamil Nadu Electrical Inspectorate. I don't think other CAGs would have not also framed any regulation. Everybody should follow the CA regulations and the codes are standards. Uh, I think there could be the, the misunderstanding by the uh, consultant or the uh, owners of the installation who have come to put the project could be from uh, the way of implementation. For example, in certain states, they may implement strictly in certain, as per regulation. That, see, that may seem new to the owner. Suppose if it is not adapted, a particular procedure is not adapted, not adapted in one region and it is completely adapted in another region, they may term it as a new rule or regulation. For example, I can say ESC, air steamer emission. It is not approved in, uh, in Tamil Nadu, uh, Tamil Nadu electrical inspectorate. However, they, the, the manufacturer or the uh, owner will say that this is the rule of CAG. So I don't think any rule or regulation. You can fight with the rule or regulation if there is any wrong uh, way of implementation. You can appraise them. There may be some ignorance, I admit. There may be some ignorance. And you can appraise. Uh, Shiva Kumar is the right person who has brought out so many questions in the column I have seen. Uh, you can have a joint meeting with the CAG or the other uh, electrical inspectors and appraise them what is going on with the regulation, what's the way of implementation made by the Enforcers. Another thing, uh, global earthing. Regarding global earthing, there was some discussion. I want to uh, give my opinion on this. Uh, see, why people are earthing? They have been, the implementers are all following various type of earthing system, different uh, uh, facilities. For example, in uh, IT building, they are having UPS with isolation transformers. For isolation transformers, they are having derived source of supply and make it localized. 
TNS system. And in uh, industry, they are having TT system. Invariably, there will also be uh, a lightning protection nursing system also for the building. So ultimately, uh, unless the people are clear, well-versed with a different type of uh, uh, nursing system, uh, it is very tough uh, to convince them uh, to go for a global nursing. And the, the, the important point is the final missing link is the conversion of TT into TNS. But uh, there are when you go for TT, there is some other convenience. Even Japanese people are adopting TT. There are some other convenience. We have to uh, ensure uh, leakage. For example, uh, we have to employ some uh, uh, earth leakage circuit breaker or ICCDs or even core balance CTs to uh, make the fault clearing device to trip for avoiding hazard to the persons. So we can't uh, hard, uh, make a hard and fast rule to ensure that you provide this much number of air control. But there is a way. The number of air control for TNS system will be minimal. But we need not pass all the earth current to uh, pass all the current to go through the general mass of earth. It is sufficient if we permit the uh, use the general mass of earth for the uh, lightning protection alone. And for the remaining portion, if it is a TT system, we have to use it in terms for ensuring supply quality. So these are the general thing I can face to the participant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, in this particular case, if you look at the new regulation 44, the old 42, this uh, new regulation has got two paragraphs. The first paragraph says every electrical installation shall have an RCCB of or RCD of uh, 30 milliampere. The second para says uh, uh, if the consumer premise or the exposed conductive parts are connected to the neutral of the system through a metallic conductor, that means a TN system, RCCBs are not necessary. Uh, uh, this, if we read this uh, this uh, regulation carefully, if we analyze, uh, it's actually a good move uh, to put uh, this kind of uh, regulation. So practically what will happen is in case if you go for a TT system, 30 milliampere RCD becomes mandatory. And in case if you go for a TN system, this 30 milliampere is may not be uh, applicable. So you can refer to that particular regulation, the new regulation 44. Uh, I would say it is it is it is very good. Uh, the same way only the IS 3043 and IS 732 are uh, being drafted. So uh, thanks for all the participants and thanks for the questions. So we have Mr. Armugam uh, who has raised his hand. Mr. Armugam, any questions from your side? Yes, sir. In all the industries, system would uh, equipment is 382 to 418 voter. But uh, transformer LT, our 433 voter. This is changing the voltage level 382 to 415. Can you repeat the question? Sir, all the equipment in interstices, uh, voltage level is the voltage 382 voltage to 450 voltage. But uh, transformer output voltage is December 433 as per standard. 433. I think, uh, Gopa, sir. Gopa. Sir, I think the question is uh, regarding the definition of uh, what is the nominal voltage applicable for us, the nominal voltage. Uh, for this as a background, if we look, uh, the way IEC makes is, uh, uh, for example, 230 volt uh, is the line to neutral voltage, nominal voltage, and 400 volt is the face-to-face -face nominal voltage. Now, uh, in order to give uh, the voltage to a consumer premise within certain limit, uh, the supply company can make his uh, voltage maximum to some extent. Let's say, for example, plus 10 percentage. So this plus 10 percentage, 230 volt plus 10 percentage is called as the maximum continuous operating voltage, 253 volt. So this is the maximum voltage with which a supply company can put on his transformer tapping so that the last consumer gets the minimum assured uh, voltage. So anything more than 253 or up to 440 is called as the temporary over voltage. And above that, we have uh, the like the transient over voltage or something like that. But when it comes to our country, if we ask uh, the voltage, whether the voltage is your voltage is uh, 220 or 230 or 240 phase to neutral or uh, 
uh, face to face is it uh, 380 or 400 or 415 or 440 this confusion exists between different parties transformers are sometime uh, the transformer suppliers say something 433 and uh, sometime the user say something the energy supply company says uh, 240 volt and this is actually it's an area which is uh, of a big confusion uh sari ji can you add yeah, yeah. something okay. on this uh, yeah yeah i rejoined again i had some problem with my network see uh, as per the standard the uh, nominal nominal voltage is 415 volts and uh, for lt it is uh, for lt it is 240 volts but for transformer it is set 430 volts so that the, at the end, uh, end you can get the rated consumer voltage uh, and again some uh, uh, regarding the tolerance in the voltage 10% is allowed which can vary but uh, at consumer side it should be 4 and 15 volts three phase or it should be 2 and 4 volts per single phase and rating of transformer is 4 and 33 volts uh, actually your voice is breaking if you can switch off the camera the sound would be better yeah. see for the consumer the single phase voltage is 240 volts and three phase it is 415 volts but the rating of transformer as per design it is mentioned 432 volts uh your voice is broken uh sri uh, mukul kumar can you add uh, any points on this part gopa sir i would like to put some points Uh, sir one moment sir we will, we will i will get back to you sir uh, mr mukul kumar please next yes, is about uh, there is a good news there is really a good news that uh, this kind of confusion is going to get cleared in like few weeks or a month or so because this distribution voltage level is really a kind of a headache and we have uh, our distribution division handling a standard voltage level for all the stakeholders in india so they are coming with some standard voltage level for like 240 volt for four at 440 volt at that level and that will be standardized all over india so just wait for like few weeks or a month or so there will be a guideline issued by cea where this voltage at uh, confusion basically distribution level will be cleared so it is under process and it is the initiative of ministry only and our ca so we are actually working upon it and definitely that guideline will be published in a week uh, like in few weeks or so thank you thank you very much uh, mr mukul uh, apavu sir over to you ah yes sir uh, it's a good thing that uh, uh, sri dc is set to be announced by the ca because this the voltage band is uh, preliminarily uh, uh, prescribed in is 12360 and uh, the adjustment between the different countries that is we have to come down to 400 and they have to come down to 450 uh, so it's quite impractical uh, impractical for the past several decades and now uh, we learned that uh, the, some end will be there uh, but the, the as, a, as a consequence of such uh, uh, promulgation of voltage level say 415 or 400 Uh, 215 to 230 whatever the thing uh, sorry 240 to 230 whatever the thing uh, once it is announced at least in future the manufacturer will have to uh, uh, device or design their equipments motors and other devices so far there will be a lot of equipments in place uh, the question actual question raised by the participant is he is using 2380 volt or four, less than 400 volt there are several uh, instances like this in Uh, MNCs, multinational companies, where they import all the machineries from the uh, from abroad, whether from Korea or from Europe, uh, they are all using 380 volt. The simple way is they have, they can select such machines and have their own uh, voltage rating for that distribution plants on the 11 kV bar 380. We do not uh, allow for the tolerance because the equipment is. Uh, Uh, designed to perform in that 4380 volts so uh, this is my opinion and in in uh, sri parambur industrial area in chennai there are a lot of mncs who are using 
11 kg per 380. So that that uh, manufacturing process is uh, correctly observed without compromising the performance of the equipment. So this is nothing to do with the voltage specification. Voltage specification, uh, voltage burned, it's a very good thing to normalize, to bring in uniformity throughout this country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we have um, uh, Dr. K. Mamallan. Uh, Dr. Mamallan, if you can uh, hear, uh, you have raised your hand. You can go ahead uh, in the question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the excellent information, sir. This uh, EAC, the electrical area classification, uh, generally uh, determine the existence and the extent of uh, hazardous locations in the manufacturing facility. Uh, in our uh, so national uh, electrical code NEC and the NFPA 70 classifies uh, where the fire and explosion hazards may exist due to the presence of flammable gases, vapors, or liquids in a uh, refinery in the high risk area, sir. Is there any uh, regulation in uh, new regulations, sir? Electrical regulation uh, NEC regarding NEC electrical area classification. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, Dr. Mamalan, first of all, uh, we should understand that uh, the NFPA 70, we are not in America, we are Indian. So, NFPA 70 is not applicable to India. The National Electrical Code of America is also not applicable to India. These are for American citizens. Uh, first, we should follow our uh, rules and regulation. Now, our rules and regulation, we have the NEC, National Electrical Code 2011, the upcoming uh, one is probably in next two, three months time, the new NEC of India will come out. There uh, in the, uh, there is a separate uh, section for uh, the um, explosive areas. Uh, so you can refer to that particular part. Also, we have the IS standards on uh, explosive areas, which is adopted from the IEC. So please refer to the Indian standards, uh, never to this NFPA 70 or the NEC of America. With this, uh, I would like to have the answer from uh, 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 Sri Mukul. Uh, uh, can you add some more answers here? Yeah, sure, sir. Actually, for the explosives, uh, we have earlier department of explosive. Now it's called PESO. So anything related to uh, like such uh, dangerous or can be hazardous for that uh, we have to jointly take uh, the basically uh, uh, we have to jointly make the guidelines for that so uh, actually we are in progress uh, with something which i could not reveal right now uh, related to some electrical safety relating to some uh, uh, this uh, explosive part uh, uh, of uh, like uh, electrical installation being laid in the uh, explosive area so for that, uh, we are in touch, but uh, I would request that uh, you should write to them. And uh, as uh, Gopa Kumar sir has uh, spoken, that uh, we should follow the VS standards and NEC, and this NESC and uh, NEC of those uh, America uh, shall not be followed here. Yes, uh, thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, as of now, we follow the uh, Petroleum Explosive Safety uh, uh, Organization regulations for a uh, national, uh, that is, uh, this electrical area classification. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, sir. Also, I would like to add here one uh, important subject. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, PESO standards are one. There is one more standard for uh, explosive, the oil, oil industry, OISD, Oil Industry Safety Directorate. So these standards are actually uh, uh, following a little bit uh, uh, different stand, like they are asking for some uh, lightning protection air thing separate, uh, the tank air thing separate, the electronic air thing separate, one ohm, and uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, the old concepts are still followed. So uh, if anybody is there from that particular field, please write to the respective department. These are big mistakes, uh, those uh, those standards, like uh, standard 244 and all, which they follow is not the correct method. Uh, and these OASD standards also refer to IS3043. Please note that IS3043 never had written uh, like electronics, one ohm, uh, lightning protection, seven ohm and all. That is not correct. So we have uh, Mr. Ayala Prasad. Uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. 
yeah good afternoon this is yalla prasad uh, uh, i have two questions uh, uh, my questions goes to mukul hello uh, the first question with respect to the i really appreciate the ca adding board guard on the cross arm where the suspension insulator used for the oh line can we extend the same for the uh, in oh line where the pin insulator is used that is my first question and second question uh we have investigated many electrical accidents with respect to offline ups return supply of offline ups can we add any regulations with respect to the offline ups in our uh, ca uh, safety standards thank you thanks mr ella prasad uh, thanks for the question uh, regarding this back feeding from single phase uh, inverters uh, Uh, in the uh, upcoming national electrical code we have in the section 9 uh, part 1 section 9 we have included a picture as well basically the uh, the the uh, usage of uh, common neutral for the inverter circuit uh, and the other parts of the installation this is creating a havoc but uh, when we talk about the ups installation not only in domestic environment but in industrial environment recently i came across a case where a three phase ups three phase input three phase output the three phase output is used for a single phase load and they are using the common neutral from the transformer uh, to the output of the ups so this is also a, an area where a lot of mistakes are happening it will lead to lot of accidents so if you are using any ups the output of the ups neutral shall be electrically isolated or use the electrically isolated circuit at the output uh, sali ji can you add any answer on this you are you were drafting the part 1 section 9 of national okay. electrical code we we already have taken care of this issue and we have clearly mentioned that the neutral of inverter circuit should be totally distinct from the supply side starting from the inverter the neutral should get disconnected when the supply is uh, transferred from one supply end to other end so that is the clarity which we have given here I mean and uh, in respect of uh, regulation in respect of uh, inverter manufacturers also there has to is uh, has to have some inverter help that this thing should not happen Yes, uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Prasad, I hope uh, you have I have asked two questions. One question was regarding the inverter. What was the second question? Second question is board guard. In new regulations, we have the regulation insisted that we need to provide board guard on the cross arm where suspension insulator is used for the overhead lines. So can we add board guard for the cross arm where the pin type insulator is used to protect our boards in our country? Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Shri Mukul uh, Mukul Kumar. You can add any reply. for this question sure sir so it is one of the you know great way of thinking by yella prasad ji that we have to protect the bird and we should we should install like uh, bird insulator uh, sorry uh, bird guard at the pins insulator level also sir i would suggest you to just give this thing in writing to us as a comment on this draft uh, safety regulation and we will discuss and accordingly we will act upon it about your you. uh, that uh, about your that uh, second thing uh, that uh, accident related to this uh, offline uh, ups so you mentioned sir there are many number of uh, accidents happening i just wanted the accident reports so that we can take this thing into account since many number of accidents are happening even a single non fatal accident is really really dangerous for our country and as you mentioned there are many happening then it's it is a critical issue and real addressing is required as gopal sir has said and uh, hemant uh, salil sir has mentioned that in nsc they have they have addressed this thing but since this is critical you write to us and you give the that uh, accident cases definitely we are going to make as a as a uh, like additional chapter on discussion uh, after discussing with the senior authorities here in cea if actually it is pertaining to many accidents then okay sir over to you go sir thank you uh, sali ji 
Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that the categorization we have made in the accidents, there are seven categories. There is no such a special, uh, I mean, uh, mention that uh, accidents happening because of this UPS. I think in that respect also, the categorization also, we will have to rethink and restructure those categories. So, because we can find out. Thank you, sir. Sir, your voice is breaking. Sir, your voice so is breaking, have, sir. Yeah, I would like to ask one question, uh, Sri James Kutti, sir. Uh, uh, recently, I think uh, two or three months back, uh, I even uh, I got a, uh, uh, a newspaper cutting which says the uh, the lineman who was working on the overhead line, he got electrocuted. The line was off, but uh, it was a back feed from a house uh, inverter. James Kutti, sir, any uh, point you would like to add, add here? Actually, uh, it was not uh, from the inverter, I think. Uh, it was from a generator. And uh, the changeover was not uh, four pole type. And uh, through the neutral conductor, it was uh, the accident was happened. Anyway, uh, even with the inverter or a generator or UPS, as we discussed just now, the neutral should not be common. That only the remedy. Uh, OK, that's all. Uh, one, I, I would like to add here one thing. I have seen these accidents happen uh, in respect of generators because they put a separate contactor for the neutral. It should be linked one. It should be either four pole or two pole. For single pole, it should be two pole uh, type, and it, for three pole, it should be four pole type. If you provide independent separate contactor for neutral, this thing might happen. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We have uh, Mr. Nilesh uh, Chaplay. Uh, uh, Mr. Nilesh, you can unmute yourself. You have raised your hand and you can ask the question. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am in the auditing. Good afternoon. Your voice is your voice is little bit low. If you can make it a little bit louder. Very low. Sir, I am into yeah, yeah. I am into the auditing firm uh, in Mumbai, EPC Energy. So my question is that the CE has uh, says that for a residential a house wiring has to be a, a FR or FRLS. It is a very good thing. But uh, my concern is that most of the residents I am auditing, it was very old building like 1960 or 1980s. So they are saying that we are did not face any problem. Now you are suggesting that you have to change the wiring into the FRLS. So in that how we should say to them whether what to do in that case? They have to change entire wiring of the house or how it is? Yes, Mr. Nilesh, actually, uh, I would like to add a little bit and then over to Sri Mukul Kumar. See, in an existing installation, uh, the, the whatever you were following, we were following earlier that is applicable. The regulations probably is for the new installations or once when you repair or rechange something. Uh, over to you, Sri Mukul. Yeah. Yes, sir. See, adding of seat belt in your vehicle or, sorry, uh, this uh, ADA system, airbag, everything, like there was some cost addition because of it. So, if safety is there, and what is the cost of a life in comparison to that, the cables you are mentioning? Is it comparable? My question to you is that. Is it comparable? Yes. Uh, yeah, not. Definitely not. not. Definitely not. So why are you compromising with the safety? See, simple thing is that it is in the regulation. It is for the betterment of the public. It is ensuring electrical safety, ensuring, uh, ensuring the removal of electrical hazard. See, so many of fire, uh, these incidents are taking place. General public is seeing those viral video, the fire incidents uh, happening in the high-rise buildings. They are seeing those viral videos and they are just like, they are saying anything, anything, anything. Okay. So for those moments, those moments where we relate ourselves with those incidents that can come to us for that, this kind of initiative or changes is not appreciable. This is the thing which is in the greater public interest. 
and it is implemented through the regulations and every month or so there are fire incidents here in any metro you can take some are reported some are not reported even so we have to work upon that we have to take a collective responsibility of everyone from the regulator from the you can say contractor you can say discoms or at any level even the consumer also they have to take the responsibility responsibly for the family for their future for everyone here in the india they have to take that okay this is from my side thank Over you thank you Gopasa. thank you thank you very much thank you very much uh, mr mukul uh, hemant sali any points you would like to add here yeah i think i think uh, what what the problem he has mentioned is in respect of old installations i think his question is whether he can mention he can mention that they should change the wiring so uh, see in from the point of view of affordability it may not be possible for those consumers but always recommendation will be there and i think this is and if they find the results are not satisfactory sir your voice they, is breaking uh, i oh, yeah. think sali ji your voice is breaking oh thanks thanks sali ji sir thanks sali ji uh, we have uh, mr shivakumar raise the, the hand again uh, shri shivakumar uh, please uh, your uh, go ahead with your question please the question i just want to answer mr armogam regarding this 433 volt and 415 volt thing eh? 433 volt is called the no load voltage of the transformer transformer standard says it is the no load voltage when you do not load the transformer but when you load the transformer to its rated capacity voltage drop will happen within the windings of the transformer to the extent of the percentage impedance of the transformer let us say uh, less than 10 kv it's about 5% impedance when you say 433 volt uh, open circuit voltage when you load the transformer to say 500 kv or 630 kv 5% of the voltage gets dropped when the transformer is fully loaded the terminal voltage of the transformer is about 415 volt that is why the motor voltage is 415 volt and the transformer voltage is 433 volt i just want to clarify mr armogam on that thank you thank you very much uh, shivu master thank you very much uh, we have mr batula nagaraju mr nagaraju you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the question uh, sir uh, good morning sir good morning everyone uh, sir actually uh, if we see that uh, accidents uh, uh, percentage of accidents in distribution level it's around 40 to 50% is happening at distribution and consumer end sir Uh, if you see the production philosophy starting from low low power to high power actually generally we are increasing production philosophy sir simply a small uh, small uh, lighting load lighting circuit to isolate is sufficient for that one mcb again it is coming mccb over voltage short circuit earth fault it is coming we are increasing when uh, power level is increasing we are increasing the production philosophy sir uh when it comes to the accidents most of the accidents are happening in low voltage level uh, why can't we concentrate this protection system uh, protection philosophy at low voltage level uh, with uh, some primary protection uh, as well as some backup protection with fuses uh, uh, at the same time relay coordination in low voltage level we are uh, facing some uh, uh, voltage unbalancing most of the cases we are facing voltage unbalancing uh why can't we take in care these things sir uh, it's uh, my concern sir yeah. you, please uh, mr nagaraju actually uh, mm -hmm. see all these points are already included in the some uh, um, important basic minimum requirements in the regulation also uh, the mandatory requirements are included in the is code of practices all these documents are in place the question is how many of the users how many users are following it properly i always try to refer to one very simple point 1989 is732 has written to test the fault loop impedance just to ensure that your fuse or your mcb is able to do its job but if we go to the market and try to buy a fault loop impedance meter which is probably 20000 rupees this meter itself is not available so it is not the regulation or the standard it is the practicing engineers those who are really responsible for this kind of uh, very low quality uh, you know unjustified installation first we have to 
all the engineers we should uh, upgrade ourselves and we should start following the standards and the code of practices thanks thanks uh, thank you very much sir, for the question sir, uh, please sir, uh, please uh, please see uh, regulation number 37 sir in page number 25 here it is given only r sir there is no and if you see fuse is r with uh, mcb or mccb or only r is there sir oh, you please uh, uh, it is uh, entirely philosophy is a different sir what i am telling is a primary production and a back backup production sir if you see that regulation only r is given sir in that way if you uh, uh, philosophy if we change like this way no, sir a little bit we can reduce that uh, accident sir and uh, go for uh, sir may i comment yes please go for sir uh yes, who please. is the gentleman uh, mr uh, uh, nagaraju uh, nagaraju sir uh, whatever the things you, you are thinking that it should be there please give us in writing okay please i would request you give us in writing you know the actually there it has been the email id has been given in the uh, the publication you give us in writing we will discuss and we will find if it is suitable then we will incorporate it Yes, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mukul. Uh, we have Mr. Milan Vaishnav. Uh, Mr. Milan, uh, you have raised your hand. You can uh, ask the question. Mr. Milan is uh, an electrical from the Electrical Inspectorate Department uh, uh, from Maharashtra. Mr. Milan. Uh, sir, uh, my, uh, my suggestions comes, uh, queries were regarding uh, this, that uh, number of accidents because of snapping of conductor. As per the uh, Central Electricity Authority's website, they have put the data in which they told that nearly 3,400 uh, 3, accidents in the year 2015 and 16 were happened only because of snapping of conductor. Okay. And the snapping of con uh, the proportion in terms of percentage was nearly 25%. Okay, so uh, the time has come that Central Electricity Authority uh, should incorporate explicit regulations for the purpose of uh, patrolling of overhead lines and uh, uh, to reduce the number of accidents because of snapping of conductor. There will be two uh, benefits for the patrolling of lines as per IS 5613. The standard is for the um, operation, installation and maintenance of overhead lines, including L11 KV. Okay. So basic thing is that uh, uh, recently uh, in this discussion, some senior sirs uh, asked that uh, uh, there is a possibility of neutral breakage of conductor. That's why TNCS system is difficult to uh, maintain. Uh, in India. Okay. So if the patrolling is going on continuously for, let us say, for every three uh, months, as per the provision of IS 5613, uh, then this uh, breakage of neutral conductor and uh, strict implementation of TNCS system as per regulation number 16 will be uh, safe uh, as compared to uh, this present trend and also second thing is that uh, central electricity authority uh, nearly 25 percent of accident are happening because of snapping of conductor but they have not taken any initiative to uh, miss uh, keep the overhead line conductor intact okay the as for the provision of i6 5613 so uh, i think that uh, uh, regulation number 59 start from uh, operation and miss uh, for the overhead lines. So if they include that uh, there shall be patrolling as per IS 5613, that will be the helpful case. So that was the first point. And sir, uh, second point was that Central Air City Authority uh, introduced Charter Electrical Safety Engineer guidelines. Uh, I think uh, just two to three years before they implemented that. And they asked that uh, which equipment should be purchased by CAC for the purpose of cell certification. And uh, strangely that they have excluded fault to impedance tester or fault to impedance meter. Okay. So at one time we are saying that, okay, fault to impedance and this uh, our terminal, uh, this IS3043 is very much important. And at the second time we are excluding that. Means, uh, are we saying that uh, fault of impedance is not uh, necessary or mandatory thing? This is the message we are giving. And also the third point was there that uh, uh, regarding electric vehicle charging uh, inspection and permission, uh, <coughs> what they have done there that uh, uh, they have included as an owner, uh, means if you read that uh, section, I think the regulation number 126, I think he lost the connection. Uh, suddenly he is not there. So uh, the question from uh, Mr. Milan. Yeah, Mr. Milan, you are back. 
यस सर सो सर एट इज एक्चुअली मीन्स वी आर एट द सेम टाइम वी आर आस्किंग दैट सेंट्रल चार्ट इलेक्ट्रिकल सेफ्टी इंजीनियर शुड परचेस दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वालिफिकेशन एज वेल एज एक्सपीरियंस एंड एज वेल एज मटेरियल ही शुड परचेस ओके एंड एट द सेकंड टाइम वी आर गिविंग मीन्स चार्जिंग परमिशन फॉर चार्जिंग और सेल्फ सर्टिफिकेशन फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल चार्जिंग स्टेशन बाय द ओनर हिमसेल्फ we are not asking that which qualification he should possess and like this so these are the regulation we are creating confusion okay uh, in this regulation number 32 uh, at new regulation uh, proposed regulation 32 and 45 uh, requirement of self certification with the help of uh, chart electrical safety engineer required but not with the case of electric vehicle charging station so what we want to deliver the message so it is kind of confusion so these are the were three topics and also sir uh, uh, as per iic 62305 the protection uh, means the standard for the lightning protection system uh, i think that uh, it ce has done an excellent thing that uh, they restrict uh, they have not put restrictions for some buildings of um, 15 meter height they have included that airplane sites and hospitals likewise in regulation number 39 i think so so if they include that uh, national heritage cultural heritage building also because uh, some months back we see that uh, there was lightning strike at uh, temple premises heightened temple so if this included and some persons also died in rajasthan so if we include such kind of provisions that uh, yes this building is uh, situated at top or this building is natural importance cultural importance archaeological importance and also some kind of such kind of buildings are there that they are not having 15 meters of height but they uh, there are multiple public gathering uh, because sir recently two days before in chandrapur of state maharashtra uh, what happened that in school premises uh, lightning thunderstorm happen and uh, you know that in school minimum there are 2 to 300 students are there so if we can protect themselves because uh, a single stroke of lightning strike will kill uh, means numerous students or may injure numerous students so basic protection is also required there irrespective of height of that building so these were sir my thank four you Th thank you thank you very much uh, mr milan you have added you have uh, uh, asked three or four questions but uh, one question i would like to just add you should refer regarding the fault loop impedance please um, uh, look at the new regulation uh, 43 Uh, sub regulation there are two sub regulations where it says uh, the supplier has to make this test uh, and the next regulation says the customer has to uh, make this particular test uh, definitely in comparison to the 2010 regulation lot of improvements already are included in the uh, new draft uh, such as the confusion of rcd is very clear now the uh, the uh, earthing part is very clear now which is uh, the the uh, the two separate earth electrodes and all those things are uh, made uh, just a reference to the is3043 definitely a lot of uh, improvements uh, had uh, already uh, been incorporated in the new regulation uh, then uh, the second part uh, uh, we would like to listen to you uh, sri uh, mukul kumar regarding the battery the the electric vehicle charging part or the administrative part okay okay sir so uh, actually i want to make one thing very very clear that the floor is open to you the regulations are available for comments it is not only the ca regulation it is the regulation of government encompassing all the residents here in india the ball is in your court the way you want to return it's up to you through your comments inputs whatever suggestions you want to give and to milan vasno sahab i think we had meeting on 14th this 14th only there our chief electrical inspector sahab has requested to give you this thing in the writing please give us in the writing definitely we will look into it and we'll find it suitable then we will incorporate it and thank one you more thank you very that, much let, let me sir add further one more thing is that we have a standing committee on electrical safety which in wherein we have got the representative from various state electrical inspectorates and your cig sahab cig of maharashtra is a member of it so any regulations which are made it is a kind of a collective responsibility collective effort of all the states uts 
and also some other agencies also numerous agencies and we are holding the democratic principles also we are fulfilling it in making the regulations so it is not like only ca regulations that ca is just uh, taking the ingredient and framing and bringing into public domain it is the input of all the state governments it is the thing that we are doing at a pan india level we are including the voice response every one feeling here in it and that's why this time we have extended window of 45 days for comments and i would request again milan vasno sahab aap प्लीज हमें भेजिए फोर्टीन को हमने हमने आपसे यही रिक्वेस्ट किया था आप करिए आपको मैंने फिर से मैं वही रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं कि आप अपने कमेंट्स हमें भेजिए यू नो द ईमेल आईडी प्लीज सेंड ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर मुकुल थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच बिफोर गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट गेस्ट uh mr prini peter but before that i would like to add a small information which just came to my mind for that i will share uh, my screen uh, and make a small uh, show some small slides all of you know that the uh, lift uh, regulations for lift this is a, like a state subject and the again the electrical inspectorates are responsible for making the lift requirement i am showing uh, on the screen you can see uh, the there are there are two uh, standards of uh, the bis uh, lift is 14665 uh, also on the bottom you can see uh, part 5 1999 here uh, in the clause 15 the earthing arrangement shall be proper and the electrical contractor shall ensure that the earth resistance shall not exceed 1 ohm as per indian electricity rule actually this is a mistake in the standard also the amendment one of the amendment uh, in the uh, lift standard uh, they have written uh, 8.4.4.7 there shall be separate earth pit for lift actually all these mistakes had happened over a period of time but now the situation is changing the new bias is about to publish the new lift standard uh, which is based on the iso 8100 part 1 and 2 now if we look at uh, the earthing requirement of lift uh, uh, all of you knows that uh, high rise buildings a uh, uh, lot of places uh, you know the the electrical inspectorate uh, is asking for two separate run of uh, uh, strips going to two separate earth pits uh, and uh, you know a lot of confusion happens in that particular case but in the new standard what is written is uh protective earthing you should do earthing as per is732 you should have a protective you connect the exposed conductive parts of your lift uh, to the uh, protective equi potential bonding of your installation this is point number 1 also the verification in the clause 6.3.2 electrical installation visual check continuity of protective conductors that means the the resistance of the earth connection is intact as a result uh, your protective devices are able to operate that is this particular testing then measurement of insulation resistance and the last one verification of the effectiveness of uh, measures for fault protection like uh, automatic disconnection that means the the rcd testing or the uh, mcb fault loop impedance testing all these are uh, included in the upcoming standard i hope the standard will be gazetted very soon Uh, so if anybody ask for this uh, lift two separate uh, earth pits uh, please note that uh, that is not correct uh, you cannot uh, even if the standards have written to use two separate earth pit if there is a mistake we should all of us talk each other and we should open up and tell that this is a mistake and anyway in the new standard this has been taken care so this is a, an added uh, information which i wanted to tell all of you so over to you mr prini peter you have raised your hand you can ask unmute yourself and ask the question also we yeah, have a lot of I questions audible? on the chat box yes please am i audible? yeah uh, good afternoon everyone uh, my name is prini and uh, i have a, a clarif- two clarifications on this regulations one is on the clearance between the um, uh, overhead conductors with the uh, uh, high rise building or the industry building as per regulation 63 it is shown the uh, separate voltage levels for the horizontal clearances or the vertical clearances between the uh, uh, building to the uh, conductor overhead conductors i am telling about 
and uh, my question is if we are doing any expansion or any uh, building constructions uh, do we have to take care of the right of way clearance also other than this or we have to take care only the uh, as per regulation 63 only that's my one clarification on the uh, clearances part thank you thank you thank you very much for the question this is always a, a big confusion and this is again a lot of people ask the same question so uh, uh, sali ji can you add uh, yeah. any answer on this case yeah. Uh, so this regulation for 63, if you are going to construct anything in the vicinity of the existing mine, maybe overhead or underground, you have to take NOCs from electrical inspectorate and the concerned owner of that line. So in this case, it could be either distribution company or a transmission company. You will have to take the NOCs. And while giving NOCs, it's duty of those of those authorities to check whether the clearances are being maintained or not, whether the right of way is to be maintained or not. And if at all, yes, then it's one difficulty if you check the right, uh, right of ways as per I standard, those are very huge. And in cities, it's very, very difficult. So it may not be possible to maintain the right of way, but still it is a discussion of that uh, respective transmission company, company or utility company. And uh, after all, electrical inspector has to give his NOC also. So that is a must follow that. Thank you. Thank you, Saliji. Uh, the same question. Uh, can we have uh, your opinion, Sri James Kuti, sir? Okay, uh, see, as per 63, uh, there is some point uh, regarding a technical feasibility, right to pay, etc., from the supplier or owner of the uh, line, sub, uh, supply line. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, you should get the uh, NOC for that. You have to uh, support with the drawings uh, countersigned by the owner of the supplier in which uh, they will mention about a right of way, then a technical feasibility, etc., and all those things. Uh, and the clearance mentioned uh, in the in 63 itself is applicable to applicable for the case. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the answer. Uh, I hope, uh, Ms. Prini, you got the answer. Uh, yeah. So uh, we uh, have uh, Mr. Rahul. Uh, ahead, sir, uh, the, as per a uh, recent uh, discussion we had related to peso, since uh, we are also in the in manufacturing of uh, explosives, so uh, we are dealing with peso from last 10 years and peso and we are uh, working together to improve the workplace safety. So, but after the uh, recent incident of Birith blast, now we come to know that uh, entire the uh, light fittings and other equipments in warehouses or in plant area that we need to change with flame proof fittings. But as per the area classification, all area under falls under safe area. But uh, now they are demanding for you, you deploy the flame proof fitting, you deploy the flame proof CCTV, but there are no any directives from any government authorities on paper. So when we approached to electrical inspector, they told that uh, you, you just follow the area classification, but uh, uh, part of the safety peso is uh, forcing us and directing us to deploy uh, flame proof CCTVs. But in market also, there are lim limitation for uh, pro product uh, limitation in category of flame proof. So here there is a gap between uh, various government authorities. So I just want to focus on this. Thank you. Thanks for the information, Mr. Rahul. Uh, uh, I don't know any of our uh, panelists can answer to this. Apav, sir, any answer? I am answering to it. I am answering to it, sir. Yes, please. Mr. Rahul, you have raised a very genuine query. And actually, it's, uh, it's just an add-on which is required for additional safety. So you have brought very uh, like uh, new thing into the picture. But uh, I would suggest you, whatever the incidents which are happening, which you are just mentioning, you just send yes, the details, how it happened and wh where was the leak and all those things and hope we can do anything in this regard because I know that from the manufacturer side you are facing the problem and this is the real issue because those things are not required in abundant or are not in general requirement. So that's why there can be problems. 
but it is a it is a thing of emerging nature so we need to address it so i would request the incident which happened to share with us and also uh, whatever the like uh, add ons which peso is telling to you uh, i think that they are looking for the additional safety which they as an agency they are looking from their point of view of the safety so i would uh, think that they are right in their uh, opinion thank you sir thank you thank you thank you very much mr mukul uh, so uh, we have a few more uh, people those who have raised the hand uh, uh, mr santosh sahu uh, you have raised your hand also mr vinod mr santosh also mr vinod vinod salunke uh mr himanshu you also had uh, raised your hand in between if you have any points you can uh, ask sir sir uh, uh, i just wanted to say something regarding the safety point sir that uh, any uh, for any uh, system sir safety are been uh, provided for at multiple stages sir for this primary safety secondary safety and some of the gentlemen told regarding the uh frls wire it is a very good initiative that modern technology has been included in the standard itself and the, it will be in the regulation sir but at the same time sir i feel ki it is a secondary uh, safety because uh, when fire happens uh, the, the this uh, when fault happens the primary protection should work first and regarding the primary protection again the same thing sir ki proper earthing system and this fault loop impedance and all these points uh, which are still missing from the standard um not the fault impedance the regarding the clarity on the earthing system sir because that will ensure the uh, loop impedance and uh, protection uh, uh, this uh, tripping of the mcbs and other points has to be uh, included sir though uh, we are making comments and we will be sending to uh, ca sir but from uh, other um, uh, this panelist of, uh, if you are of the same opinion uh, i think you should include in that point and regarding one more thing sir ki one of the gentlemen also uh, mr uh, i think david also has mentioned that sir in the regulation 33 sir we are uh, telling the testing of the installation and uh, we are telling that csc and uh, this uh, csc should maintain this uh, all equipments and it should be calibrated every time for csc sir appointing sir there will be an exam conducted by the electricity regulatory commission or the inspector directorate and uh, they will be checking their uh, this all parts sir um their instruments are calibrated or not sir but at the same time sir regulation permits licensed electrical contractor sir uh, to do the same thing and even consumers for self certification uh, self certification sir in that case sir matlab uh, whether he, they had done her correct or not uh, uh, that should, regulation should speak on that part also sir thank you thank you mr himanshu uh, thanks for the uh, questions uh, we have a few people who has raised the hand we are uh, going uh, you know at the far end of the program so mr davis uh, mr santosh mr vinod and mr krish uh, also miss maithili uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question mr vinod good up hello everyone hello everyone my name is vinod salumke and uh, earlier the gentleman uh, said the same thing that i am about to uh, ask uh, when uh, in uh, regulation 33 the uh, same authority is given to electrical license contractor as uh, cac so i am concerned about the uh, uh, authenticity of uh, electrical contractor who is uh, helping the self certification so uh, mr vinod your question was not clear in between the voice was dropping uh, so you have uh, spoke about the regulation 33 where the where uh, the responsibility is given to different parties including the supplier including the owner including the electrical contractor including the chartered electrical safety engineer so but what was the question uh, when when uh, a supplier or consumer or owner Oh, sorry mr vinod your voice uh, was uh, not at all audible uh, uh, we would like to go back uh, to this i, I think this uh, regulation 33 uh, i have gopal sir, have gopal sir my, uh, uh, mr vinod question is written in the chat box also sir 
yeah yeah, yeah. okay actually thank you thank you mr vinod actually uh, uh, mr himanshu if you can read the question because i have so many chats and i am unable to look into that if you can read the question so uh, uh, we would like to mr uh, davis uh, yeah uh, good afternoon i'm sir gop kumar and uh, all the distinguished uh, distinguished uh, panelists um, am i audible yes okay thank you uh, it was uh, quite a interesting session a lot of discussion it is more than a monologue i think it was a uh, clarified lot of my doubts do i uh, raise my hand sometime back but i think most of my answers were come through by the time but one thing which i would like to emphasize as a safety trainer and also with the 35 plus years of industry experience uh, in the power system uh, this earthing uh, become uh, earthing is directly as yes, affecting the electrical safety and ca regulation mr mogul kumar was repeatedly mentioning about uh, the importance of safety and all this now uh, what is a, i think this clarification on earthing system t and uh, tt tns global earthing fault loop resistance i think these are the topics uh, i know it is a technical topic but and how to address this topic just to uh, this is my way of whenever i take a training session this is again come up and electrical safety i believe it is directly uh, with the electrical earthing so if somebody can uh, give an insight more to this or a, give thank an emphasis thank you thank that. you very much sir thanks thank thanks you. Thank, thank you very much for the uh, question sir actually one simple uh, understanding which we have to make is uh, while looking at the name earthing we think that it is uh, something uh, some plate or pipe in the soil so because uh, the name is earthing right so uh, actually we need to change this uh, this uh, this uh, mentality uh, earthing has very little to do with the earth electrode in soil but earthing means uh, uh, proper equipotential bonding luckily we have made the name as earthing instead of earthing if we have changed the name to mooning then uh, people will go to moon <laughs> to make earth <laughs> electrode and i, I completely do that. i completely agree with gopumar so, because i have been part of many accident investigations and wherever i come across these people one of the recommendation is to increase the number of earth pits but the connection the physical inspection even between the equipment to the electrode or the grid or separation or whatever uh, as uh, as mentioned is 3043 it is all forgot and it is only number of earth electrodes keep in added and then they feel they are all safe so thank you very much go kumar yeah thanks thanks actually these subjects are very well very clearly written in is 3043 right. don't read the first 22 classes <laughs> don't read start right. reading from the class 22 onwards okay. next two three classes if you if you read it, class 22 23 24 25 then you will be able to understand what exactly the standard is uh, uh, is writing very simple you should right. avoid shock and right. you should trip the protective device before it uh, creates a uh, heat so very right, simple right, right. now uh, i can mention one thank you, sir. incident which i come across uh, i was sir we have uh, of... another uh, question okay. uh, from okay. miss okay. maithili thanks for your question thank you. sir thank you. maithili thank you. you can uh, maithili you can ask your uh, question sorry, madam i maithili sir is it audible for you yes uh, sir uh, i got a suggestion or a request uh, to mughal kumar sir there is a safety uh, working clearance uh, is given in regulation rule 46 sub regulation 23 sir yes yes please we are listening uh, the, i am like listening ma'am please continue i would like to suggest uh, for the outdoor substation the face to face clearances and uh, face to earth clearances may also be included in the regulation sir please like face to face clearance so, uh, sure. 11 kb this is, uh, yeah. this is the i think 7 to 8 comments you, which you have given uh, it's like uh, in addition to that na this whatever you are speaking right now no sir you are from uh, tamil nadu electric inspectorate yes sir okay ma'am so we have taken your comments already and i think that this and is uh, to comment this uh, in my this is your additional comment i guess yes sir yes sir Okay, ma'am. That's just given the same way in the written way which we have given okay, earlier. Okay. We will incorporate it. That is the best no clearances and best clearances. Uh, we will ah uh, we will incorporate incorporate it for like discussion. And after that, your comments were uh, actually uh, appreciated by uh, by our chief electrical inspector. 
thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you maithili madam and thank you mr mugul kumar so uh, i think uh, this time a lot of comments are going to come uh, ca will have a tough time to go through each and every comment and uh, incorporate or make a decision thanks anyway it's good uh, to mr santosh sahu you have raised your yes. hand uh, good, good afternoon and namaskar to all hello yes hello. please you can go ahead uh, uh, in regulation Uh, regulation 3 it is uh, mentioned designating person to operate and carry out the work on electric line and apparatus in same rule sub rule 3 says no person shall be designated on the sub rule 1 unless he possesses a certificate of a competency or electrical work permit issued by the appropriate government in this case the certificate of competency normally given to engineers diploma and degree engineers And work knowledge normally given to IT persons. In actually, is there any quality? I mean, is there any age restriction? Is there for like CEC? That are electrical safety engineer. There is 65 years age, but in in CEC regulation, there is no age restriction given to any electrical supervisor or workman permit. Second question is if minimum qualification is diploma. then in uh, some of the states or in our state it is uh, given to iti person having some uh, workman permit they are allowed to for supervisor certificate my question is uh, please clarification on this thank you very much sir uh, thanks for the question uh, shri over to you shri mukul kumar hello uh, yes sir mukul yes sir yes sir ah uh, uh, so from uh, which state you belong uh, well i am from energy department from odisha odisha, odisha. Uh, so I you, was, uh, yeah 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 uh, boli boli please continue uh, i am uh, ex uh, secondary electrical licensing but some uh, some period before the some period okay so you are aware that uh, you must be aware about that uh, the licensing board used to frame yes, rules yes. or whatever uh, the uh, yeah, this yes. recruitment criteria or whatever yes. the this criteria yeah. for like uh, certification yeah. criteria yeah. for this uh, supervisory certificate and the uh, electric workman permit so it varies it depends on the that particular state government what age limit they want to give it's up to them we don't why, have why, why, why it is not common like cac you have given in cac it is 65 years is a Um, uh, upper cap. So uh, I request C A to give a upper cap so that there should not be any confusion. In our state it is seventy, in some other state it is sixty-five. Like Telangana it is eighty. So we are in a confusion. So please uh, give some upper sir, limit. Sir, it is not only related to the C A regulation. It is a matter of employment. It is a matter of fundamental right. All those things come into the picture, and it is in the right of the state government only. is in the hand of the state government there there is a limitation we can just go to ensure electrical safety not beyond that we can't go for the we can't uh, discuss or we can't give any suggestion on the matter of the employment fundamental rights and all those things sir and okay. also sir electricity is concurrent okay. subject so that's why it is given in the hand of the licensing board yeah. or whatever the state government agency they keep it for it so it is uh, it is basically uh, like uh, vested to them whatever the age okay. limits and okay. uh, whatever the this recruitment criteria or certification criteria they are like having okay like a minimum qualification in case of supervisor it is you have written it is a diploma so how it is given to iti persons having some year of qualification yes sir Same. Yeah, Same. sir. As as uh, Sri Mukul Kumar told, uh, the, since uh, this is uh, the regulation is talking about uh, the safety part, it is not uh, the scope of age and all those uh, things are not very much included, and it is the job of the state uh, licensing board or the appropriate authority. So thanks uh, for the question, sir. We have uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rohan. Uh, uh, you have raised your hand and you can ask the question, please. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, sir. Basically, we are related to the fire industry, firefighting industry, and many a times when we approach uh, the like power plants or uh, some of the big organization, they follow the CA regulation. 
uh, for the electrical installation or electrical panel installation or uh, the substation uh, protection as a part of fire protection, uh, CA has a guideline that uh, CO2 fire separation or inert gas separation to be used, which is very conventional and old system nowadays, uh, which occupies the space and other complications. So I, my suggestions uh, for the new regulation and amendments is to adopt new technologies like aerosol fire separation systems and other new trends, uh, which can be used effectively where the space constraint is there and uh, other uh, difficulties in the installations. So I suggest we need to implement some new uh, technology in uh, terms of fire suppression also. So thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Rohan. Thanks yes. for the question. Actually, this uh, this part, uh, you know, uh, if there is a new technology, writing it directly in the regulation probably would be a problem. So first, the technology has to be proven. For that, there shall be the national standards and the people should use it uh, and people should uh, understand uh, that this is uh, useful. Then coming it uh, to the regulation would be the better way. Anyway, I'm not the person to comment on that. Uh, uh, so, uh, Sri Mukul Kumar, uh, you can make any uh, addition on this? Uh, same thing, sir. Uh, same whatever you have told. Nah. Actually, uh, I would like to invite comment on the available, uh, like, pauses, terminologies used in the draft regulation. And it would be better that we clarify those things first. After that, if you wish, you can send in the comment. Uh, fine, sir. We, yes. we have already written, so I hope we can uh, discuss in detail about those things. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Rohan. Uh, actually, I would like to add one more point here. See, um, the in the market, if we look uh, in the market, there are several uh, manufacturers claim that I am the best okay. and I have something more than uh, the others, and all these propagandas are there. We should not go behind propaganda. There should be technical document and. The proven uh, tested and the proven uh, system because we are talking about a national regulation anyway thanks uh, for the question mr rohan uh, we have uh, uh, mr krish you have again raised your hand uh, if you have any question hello hi am i audible yes please so, hi, so my question is, if you look at re, uh, regulation uh, number 18 on the new draft, it says the earth terminal on the consumer's premises, and it says that it should be, the supplier should provide and maintain. So, you know, it says, uh, the, it's a, and then it references IS uh, 3043, and IS 3043 clearly says that the impedance should be low enough to allow uh, 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 um, the protective device to trip. So, you know, I have come across many cases where I go ahead with a loop impedance tester and I am measuring the loop impedance between the phase and earth and I'm getting a very high value. Then when I call the uh, distributor, they come with a test lamp and the lamp glows and that person says there is no problem. So there is a clear disconnect between what is required and what is being done. So how would you suggest I we go about this? And then if we ask to fix it, they say you have to get the entire meter room rewired get society permission X, Y, Z. So this is a very big problem that I am facing. How do you suggest I go about this? Thank you. You see, uh, sir, uh, uh, Krish, it's, uh, it's very clear. See, until now, this subject was not well known in the market. So probably if we look at the three, four years back, uh, when, uh, for example, in my classes, once when I talk on about the fault loop impedance, out of 100 participants, 99 doesn't heard the name. But now the situation has changed. Also, in the new regulation, these uh, appropriate wordings are included in the new regulation uh, 43. So things will definitely change. Uh, only thing is, you know, we have to uh, put, uh, we have to ensure that these uh, technical informations are passed on to the distribution company, to the users, and uh, we should uh, uh, push uh, all the engineers to follow the regulations properly. But definitely, this is this will improve. Uh, the systems are improving. We have uh, Mr. Yalla Prasad. Uh, also, uh, there a uh, name TC. Uh, if you have any question, please unmute yourself and ask. We are. We have to close the program probably next uh, five, 10 minutes. If there is no question, that is also fine. Uh, so, uh, uh, Sally ji, any, any points you would like to add? Uh, Apau, sir, any points to add? Uh, Mr. TC, you can speak. 
yeah gopal sir am i audible yes a uh, very good afternoon to you all uh, in fact this uh, webinar was a very insightful and uh, my question was uh, regarding whether indian electricity rule 56 has been replaced by uh, ca safety regulations Yes, it is replaced. Okay, so uh, actually, yeah. yeah uh, now we have to follow CA regulations, right, on safety instead of IE. Not yeah, only right. now, actually, since two thousand ten. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, thank uh, you. Let me add some voice, Mr. Robert. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Please, sir. Okay. Please, sir. See, I am uh, giving uh, some conclusions regarding our discussions, uh, um, Mr. Mukul. Please note these points. Uh, see, uh, throughout our uh, regulation, or uh, uh, as per the rules in India, uh, the sanctioning authority of lightning protection, there is no such authority. But uh, electrical inspector is giving permission for lightning protection in multi-storied buildings. as per regulation 36 or new as per new draft 38 so i am suggesting to uh, see with with the new draft you added uh, lightning protection uh, as compulsory in regulation 38 so see uh, uh, regulation 77 lightning protection uh, clause is also not clear to apply in all the cases so i am suggesting Uh, uh, to add uh, uh, the same point what you have done with the regulation 38 to regulation 43 uh, sorry 45 also for initial inspections electrical inspectors should take it as mandatory the lightning protection see in our discussions many were suggesting about the lightning uh, protection requirements the buildings may not be multi storied buildings that's my own point another thing regarding regulation 38 multi storied buildings having height more than 15 meter see in, it, in uh, i suggest uh, you to add the height should be measured as per nbc that should be added there because uh, there is a conflict uh, with the word high rise building see high rise building is actually the definition is for fire protection so Uh, there must be some clarification with the uh, regulation 38 regarding the height uh, uh, that is another point see for uh, for uh, this uh, this peso and explosive items uh, we have discussed some points i suggest to add some uh, clauses uh, because uh, we need to give some uh, permission for uh, distribution uh, transformers near the petrol bunks or in even in a high rise in a multi storied building there will be some explosive room near next to that room there will be electrical room so there must be a standard clearance then it will be difficult to go to go to the explosive to go, uh, to go and the rougher explosive uh, act and those things that uh, another thing that those points are not belonging to electrical inspector uh that's a problem see another thing uh, we uh, discussed about uh, this licensing board matters and fire department matters see actually fire department matters are uh, as per nbc also the fire protection is uh, as per the local government capacity of means uh, for every state government there will, there will be a fire department so fire uh, protection uh, depends upon the capability of the Uh, uh, fire department of the uh, respective state government so licensing board also depending upon the uh, respective government that's all for now thank you uh, thank you very much sir thank you very much yeah. uh, sali ji any answer sir, yeah yeah so like regarding the height of building i think in new delhi number 14 the nbc has been referred uh, for proper implementation of these regulations nbc shall be referred so that already has been mentioned so there will not be need to uh, take the references from nbc that will be sufficient i feel thank you very much sir apav sir anything uh, any points yes yes yes, yes. Uh, uh, actually there are a lot of uh, uh, questions raised and clarifications are also uh, done in a beautiful manner uh, from especially from mukul i would like to add few points 
uh, regarding lightning protection in a building, uh, whether it is an uh, industrial building or uh, a multi story building, shopping complex, or uh, monument, these are clearly uh, given a single uh, dub rule 46.3. You should comply with I, uh, IEC 62305. That is sufficient. You have to take the risk assessment of the building. Uh, then uh, the risk assessment itself, everything is explained in clear. So I, I don't think a CEA regulation will be done in an exhaustive guideline manner. It shall indicate, uh, that's my opinion. Another thing uh, regarding the transformer of the distance, is, it's also clear, it is also provided in the CEA regulation, you observe IS1646. As Mukul observed, if there are any comments or modifications, it's the right time uh, we can do, the participant can do and uh, insist there. And regarding the electrical accidents in overhead line, as one Maharashtra electrical inspectorate people observed, uh, it's a strict liability. Electrical accidents occurring anywhere, especially in public places, is a strict liability. When a hazard is shown, hazard is there, uh, it is inherent in, in uh, 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 practice, that is electricity supply, the owner is strictly liable. It is already there in the Supreme Court, but nobody can go to the uh, highest court of our country. So the, the thing is, we should observe whether it is a public utility or a contractor doing the concession work or the electrical inspector or uh, uh, the O&M engineers of uh, public utility. It is a must that uh, it should be done. But even after providing TNES, TNCS, whatever the other thing, uh, the unfortunately, we don't have yeah, uh, uh, a clear overcurrent protective device on the every distribution transformer. In case uh, a uh, conductor snaps, there is no chance of uh, uh, getting it uh, cleared. So these are the system flaws that uh, we can't blame uh, regulation. Everybody, it's, it's a special regulation by a CEA for the for the lines and uh, the generating plant, everything. But it's also, it's always there in the regulations. It is up to the engineers who follow. And one more thing I want to add, accident, regarding accidents in UPS. So see, in UPS, uh, there are a lot of uh, confusions among people, whether you have to connect the neutral or, uh, so we have to understand uh, some lot of uh, awareness program should be created among you. Even if you provide a double pole change over switch, then there is still a possibility, uh, there is still a need for providing an earth electrode. So we, I don't think a derived supply, a, a UPS secondary is not a derived supply. It is connected to the uh, TNEB neutral. It is The earth thing is going up to the TNEB distribution transformer neutral, the integrity. You ensure. It is very tough to ensure the integrity. For which, what ceremony we have to provide an isolation transformer at the output side of EPS and make sure that the secondary neutral of the transformer is earth and its downstream equipments or loads, lighting or fans, or some other thing, uh, home gadgets are uh, seeing their own earth. See, th these are all very tough tasks. That's why we have to create a lot of uh, awareness. Uh, with, the, with the available thing, how best we can make use of the best practices. Because we already have crores of EPS in the field. All of a sudden, it is imp highly impractical to uh, make the people uh, to change all the EPS or change the configuration and everything. With our, in my opinion, with available EPS, with available uh, connections, uh, that is outgoing of uh, UPS with the incoming neutral of uh, uh, transit or the EB supply, uh, there should be some practice. Uh, so we should uh, come out with a white paper on this and uh, make it. I can also uh, send a paper to the CEA along with this. Uh, I, I request uh, the CEA can go through and make some white paper on uh, some other thing, either through, either through the uh, local EB authorities or the inspectorate or the CEA, whatever it may be. That can serve the yes. you know, good Thank you. for the people. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Thanks for the comment, sir. Thank you very much. So.
Uh, as the conclusion, we have uh, had a nice discussion, two and a half hours almost. Uh, several ma matters were discussed. The first point is very simple, the uh, IE rule. Please don't refer any IE rule. Uh, it is the regulation uh, we are supposed to uh, mention. And uh, uh, from the regulation, we discussed a lot of points. Uh, one point I would like to add, which is regarding the lightning protection. Of course, we have the national standard ISIEC 62305. But all of us should understand that in the standard, there is a subject called separation distance. Separation distance is the building, metallic parts of the building and the lightning air terminal or down conductor. There shall be a separation distance, uh, which is practically not possible in high rise buildings, even if the height of the building is, let us say, 20, 30, 40 meters. Keeping separation distance is highly impractical. So the uh, system adopted or followed in Europe and America are they already started using uh, the natural component. That means the pillar, uh, the steel reinforcement as the down conductor or air thing. So such system we have to actually adopt as quick as possible. Here the challenge is uh, in several cases after our awareness classes, uh, people are ready to accept. But to most of the cases, the... Uh, the the users, the architects are struck uh, by the point that uh, whether the electrical inspectorate will approve or not. So with this question, you know, a lot of people don't want to go because finally the inspectorate approval may not happen. Uh, this is actually not correct. Uh, please uh, note that uh, the responsibility of the electrical inspectorate is to ensure the rules, the regulations and the standard of uh, code of practices. So if the code of practices included uh, such... Uh, uh, improved uh, versions or improved uh, improvements in the code of practices. Of course, the uh, electrical inspectorate, they have to accept. There is no uh, question on that particular part. Anyway, we had a lot of uh, discussion uh, during the last two days. Uh, uh, I have just posted the, uh, the link for downloading the uh, regulation. You can click the link and you can download the new draft regulation. So please make uh, your comments uh, to the legal department of uh, CEA. It will go to the inspectorate wing. So uh, as a result, uh, probably we will have a very good uh, uh, regulation very soon. So with this, uh, we would like to stop uh, the program. It's all already uh, one, almost 1.30. So thanks for all the participants and my special thanks to all the uh, panelists, uh, Sri uh, um, Mukul Kumar, Sri Apavu, Sri James Kuti Thomas, and uh, Sri uh, Saliji. Unfortunately, today two of, two of them, two panelists, could not join. Uh, uh, so anyway, we will continue this. Uh, also, please note that uh, Vidyut Surakshit Bharat Abhiyan, Last year we started, we completed almost uh, 110 uh, programs. Out of this, lot of programs we focused on technical subjects. Probably majority of our programs were on technical subjects. For example, railways, we did uh, uh, 10 or 12 days uh, exclusively for the railway engineers. Similarly, for ISRO, for BHEL and for several organizations, we did the uh, uh, training programs. So we will continue this uh, training programs again. We will shortly announce the second phase of our uh, program, uh, which will consist of... Uh, uh, the regular subjects which you can find on our website like the design aspect of uh, the low voltage installation as per IS 732, earthing as per 732 and IS 3043, testing of the installation uh, plus uh, the uh, subjects like uh, lightning protection and all. So we will start our second program, second series of program in fact and please uh, get in touch with us if you require any clarification. Also uh, request all the participants, please read the, the regulation, make your comments to the uh, CEA legal department so that uh, at the end of the day, we get a very good uh, regulation. So with this, uh, thanks to all the participants. Also, very special thanks to all the panelists. Uh, thank you very much. With this, we end the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.